Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Seven, starring Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, Gwyneth Paltrow, Kevin Spacey, and Richard Roundtree, and directed by David Fincher. Now before I get into this movie, I did do David Fincher's work before. For example, Alien 3, his remake of Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and recently, Mink. Now, I'm going to try to get through some of his movies, like... Like, I'm going to go through this, The Game, and what was that one? Oh, yeah. Zodiac Killer, Panic Room, and Gone Girl. Well, one of them's not in order, but anyways. And then I'll get to Fight Club right after that. And then, at some point, maybe I'll do Benjamin Button. I have to think about a good time to do that one. So, let's get into this movie and see what he's all about, including with this thriller. We start with Somerset, played by Morgan Freeman, getting ready for work for the day and arrives at a crime scene, as well as a rookie named Mills, played by Brad Pitt, whom Somerset spoke to on the phone with off-screen, as they become partners after the crime scene. And I like these two characters meeting for the first time as their partners, and so far they're the best writ when they're, they're on screen together. And that's when the movie works very well. After the opening credits, we move on to a Monday when Mills wakes up next to his wife Tracy, played by Gwyneth Paltrow, and she's really good in this movie. In fact, these characters are very likable, but when we get to a later scene with Mills, <coughs> excuse me, he becomes unlikable as he feels like he's being a hard ass. But I'll get there when I get there. They solve a mystery with the dead body as the body was murdered, and they slow and they slowly solve the case. A good, which is a good. Okay, let's move on. A good movie. This will be by the end of the day, as it is two hours and six minute movie of solving the case of the mur who the murderer is. And Fincher does a good job at not only creating great characters but creating a great thrill ride as it can get scary for younger viewers than 17 years old. And that's why this movie is R-rated. And there's times that this movie is fucking sadistic. The next day, which is Tuesday, District Attorney Talbot, played by Richard Roundtree, from Shaft, if you remember that guy, goes on the TV as the press interviews him as Mills watches on the TV as the murderer uses the words of the Sedley Deadly Sins as his motives to solve the mystery and the first word is greed written in blood on the floor as they clean up the cleanup crew tries to clean it up. Meanwhile Somerset sees photos of the bloodied up carpet by the police captain who happens to be played by Arlie Ermey from Texas Chainsaw Massacre remakes and he feels like any police captain but he pulls it off very brilliantly. Somerset finds a clue of the beginning of the seven sins as the second word is, let me see if I'm saying this right, gluttony? It's spelled like G-L-U-T-T-O-N-Y, written in Greece, and there's five more deadly sins to go, and Somerset goes to the library to solve the, deadly, the seven deadly sins, and that's no wonder why this movie is called Seven, because of the seven deadly sins. And I really like the way David Fincher makes the mystery quite smoothly, as it's a lot of fun watching this movie. And I'm in for a fun ride as the script is well written. On Wednesday, Mills in his car is in his car as an officer comes up to him and drives into a work into work at the police station and gets moved into Somerset's office. And Tracy calls the to invite Somerset to dinner as they'll be working together, and I do really like the dinner scene as we learn a little more about the two protagonists, as Somerset's name is William, and Mill's name is David. And the subway goes by to, to disrupt the apartment while they're eating dinner, as Somerset and Tracy have a good laugh, while Mills seems re like, really? And the cinematography is well done, as the way the movie is shot is tremendous. And the dialogue said by the actors is really good. They find the picture of Gould's wife, who was the guy that had 
the word greed written on as he was murdered as Somerset and Mills go to Mrs. Gould's house as he's just, she's distraught to finding her husband murdered and she finds a picture of a painting that was upside down and they go to the painting in a gallery and they try to find a clue and Somerset finds fingerprints outlining the words help me which is a very good clue for the murderer to leave for the two detectives. After running the fingerprints through AFIS, excuse me, the prints are traced a day later to a pedophile named Victor, who escaped convic conviction for a rape of a minor due to a eff the efforts of his lawyer named Eli Gould, a.k.a. the greed victim, the detectives with SWAT, raid his apartment and find Victor to be the sloth victim. That's the third word of the deadly sins, as he was bound for, to his bed for one year to the day, and as they find her, his body, he's still alive but suffering from severe physical and mental de deterioration. Because his hand was cut off and pushed onto the wall behind the painting of the to leave the prints, Mills and Somerset talk while a photographer takes a picture of them and Mills pushes him down because he was pissing him off. And there's this is the point when Mills is becoming a hard ass. But I like the mystery and a lot of these scenes are great to look at. Tracy calls Somerset and requests to meet with her on Thursday. Somerset and Tracy talk at a diner and sh as she tells him how miserable she is in the city, as she reveals the reason why she wants to meet Somerset is because she's pregnant and afraid of raising a child as she's afraid of telling David, or Mills, let's say, as she decides to have a through the chat at the diner, and that scene was very good acting by Morgan Freeman and Gwyneth Paltrow. Later that day, using a contact in the FBI, Somerset gets a library list of people who have borrowed books related to the Seven Deadly Sins as Mills is going insane. In fact, the fucking character is insane by this point. The list leads the detectives to a man named John Doe, played by Kevin Spacey, whom we don't see until the end of the movie, and the name is used as an example to sign up things f like to say as, for example, kind of things. And Kevin Spacey, before he was ever in any of the shit that happened to him back in 2017, is very good in this movie, as he was a very good actor back in the day. Mills wants to force his way into John's apartment, believing that they have problems, or no, not problems, problems probable cause because John shot at them. Somerset tries to talk him down, saying the method they used to find John's apartment was illegal and that John would go free if they caught him. They get to John's apartment as they see him shooting at them and running away as they get a chase sequence that will lead them outside the building as it's raining, as it rains in the city quite a fucking bit. And John, without seeing his face, in the entire sequence beats up Mills. And John almost kills off Mills, Somerset, until Somerset uh, enters closely and runs out of there. And I like the chase scene as it worked very spectacularly. And the fact that the scene doesn't show Kevin Spacey's face at all is very impressive to me. John calls the apartment and congratulates the, the detectives on them finding him and apologizes for, for hitting Mills, also telling the young detective that he admires him greatly and says their actions have caused him to change his plans and he hangs up and they want the phone, that phone call scene was shot and the way it was shot was great. Like, it's a great shot as it works, as it should be the image of this movie. As whenever I think of this movie, I think of that shot, it's that good. They find a photo of a young woman who happens to be a prostitute that they believe may be the next victim. A receipt leads them to a Sand M leather shop where John placed an order for sexual device. 
as she is soon found dead and lust written on the door, also found in the room, is visibly shaken man by John at gunpoint, forced by John at gunpoint to wear and use the device a large strap on dildo? What the fuck? With the blade attachment to rape and kill the girl, which was great for a murder mystery. At least the dildo part isn't. The next morning on Saturday, a model is found dead with pride written on the crime scene as her nose has been cut off, which is disturbing, sure. But John gave her the choice of suicide, of sleeping pills, or calling for help in living scar scared, excuse me, as she chased to swallow she chose to swallow the pills. As the movie this movie is fucking intense in a good way, as this is a thriller like the rest of the movies I'm doing for the series. I'm going to do f anyways. On Sunday, as the detectives return to the police headquarters, John wakes up walks up to them his hands bleeding because he shaved his skin from his fingerprints to avoid identification as he gives himself up. Somerset and Mills to two more bodies. He will confess to all the murders as John's lawyers warns them. If they don't agree, John will plead insanity and the last two victims may not never be found. Because they were want the confession, the detectives agree. Somerset and Mills both have microphones taped to their chests so the rest of the task force can monitor their conversation with John during the prep. Mills tries to tell Somerset about a concern that he has with Tracy but can't bring himself to talk fully about it. As the three travel to the desert outskirts of the city in a car and they're trailed by a police helicopter for security, John explains his rationable, or rationale, excuse me, behind the murders of a way, as a way of showing people the truly evil nature of the world, as well as his desire to punish the wicked. He goes to on to say he, he, to say he will be remembered and admired, of what he has done, having been chosen to do so. As John speaks, the disguised Mills, or disgusted Mills, excuse me, is driven to rage and screams at, at John while Somerset remains calm but plainly worried. And Kevin Spacey, for what he does in this movie, pulls off a very good performance. Once they reach the outskirts, John directs them to a specific spot near some power cable towers, and the detectives walk the, him to the specific spot a van appears and Somerset spots it several hundred yards away, leaving Mills behind to cover John. Somerset gets a box and opens it as he recoils the, in horror form from what he sees inside of, and races back to Mills and desperately yells at to, for him to throw his gun away. John states to Mills that he admires Mills' life as he's envious of his wife and the love they share, he goes rather further, telling Mills he visited his home and tried to play husband with Tracy that day, and he doesn't, and he takes a souvenir, which happens to be her head, as it was John's plan that Mills will kill him, as John is guilty of envy, as he also tells Mills that Tracy was pregnant and tempers Mills, as John closes his eyes and Mills kills him in five other spots on his body as Mills comes to embody the sin of wrath. As John completes his masterpiece and Mills gets arrested and taken away, and the climax is very twisty and the best way to end this movie. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.9 out of 10. This movie works tremendously as the performances are very good. The script is very well written, and I like the reason why this movie is called Seven. <clears throat> Excuse me. The cinematography was very good in this movie, is very well shot, and the movie is absolutely well made, and the twist is rather a great way to end the movie, as this may be the best David Fincher movie so far, and I'm looking forward to the next movie. 
So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. And next time I will be back with the game. And until next time, it's time to solve a mystery.